Good evening and welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle with your host Key Lunyasha and board hopping is Ann Simmons. Uh, before I introduce my guests, Pierre Leboisier and Robert Roth, I want to uh, share with you um, some comments about uh, Black August. On this 38th anniversary of Black August, first organized to honor our martyred freedom fighters Jonathan and George Jackson, Katari Golden and James McLean, and William Christmas, as well as the sole survivor of the August 7th, 1970 Courthouse Slave Rebellion, Rochelle Sinkew McGee, who is enduring his 54th year of incarceration in California. Black August is a month of great significance for Africans throughout the di diaspora. It's a time to embrace the principles of unity, self-sacrifice, political education, political prisoners, physical fitness and or training in martial arts, resistance, and spiritual renewal. renewal. The concept Black August grew out of the need to expose to the light of day the glorious and heroic deeds of Africans who fought against the injustices heaped upon black people in, in America and other colonized nations like Haiti. In fact, the Haitian Revolution, which we'll be discussing today, began August 21st, 1791, ironically the same date our beloved George Jackson was martyred 180 years later. The following quotes from George Jackson clearly illustrate how advanced he was in his political analysis. Quote, freedom means warmth and protection against harsh exposure to the elements. It means food, not garbage. It means truth, harmony, and the social relations that spring from these. It means the best medical attention whenever it's needed. It means employment that is reasonable, that co coincides with the individual necessities and feelings. We will have this freedom, even at the cost of total war. Fascism has temporarily succeeded under the guise of reform. The only way we can destroy it is to refuse to compromise with the enemy state and its ruling class. The violence of the ruling class of this country in the long process of its trend toward authoritarianism and its last and highest state fascism cannot be rivaled in its, excess, in its excesses by any other nation on earth today or in history. In his second book, Blood in My Eye, Jackson writes, I've saved this most critical barrier to our needs of unity for last. Racism is a matter of ingrained traditional attitudes conditioned, traditional attitudes conditioned through institutions. For some, it's as natural a reflex as breathing. The psychosocial effects of segregated environments compounded by bitter class repression have served in the past to render the progressive movement almost totally impotent. Settle your quarrels, come together, understand the reality of our situation, understand that fascism is already here, that people are already dying who could be saved, that generations more will live poor butchered half-lives if you fail to act. Do what must be done, discover your humanity and your love in revolution. And now I'm gonna introduce our, our guests. Pierre Le Boissier, co-founder of the Haiti Action Committee, originally from Haiti. Uh, Pierre has lived in the Bay Area since 1971, where he's been a dedicated activist in the struggle to liberate Haiti, a supporter of Fami Lavalas, the organizing party of Haiti's majority, led by President Jean Bertrand Aristide. Pierre has tirelessly championed Haiti's grassroots movement for self-determination. Robert Roth, Co also co-founder of the Haiti Action Committee and a board member of the Haiti Emergency Relief Fund. He has been to Haiti numerous times, including the March 2011 return of President Aristide from exile in South Africa. Roth has been a social studies U.S. history teacher in, in San Francisco public schools for the past 27 years. He currently teaches at Mission High School, where he's also the social studies department chair. He's a lifelong activist working in international solidarity movements and in support of freeing all political prisoners. He was a committee of the com he was a member of the committee to free the San Francisco Eight when we worked together. That's right. <laughs> we sure did. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Freedom. Thank you. Thank so you. good to have you back. Yes. Yeah, great to be here. Yes. So. Um,
Anyway, I'm going to shut this thing down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, we're all set, I think, to start talking about what's going on in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to kick it off, Pierre? Yeah, and uh, thank you so much for your introduction of Black August and, uh, and quoting George Jackson. Wow, what a powerful mind. He was. Miss him really. so much. And, and I should also mention that uh, this is also uh, the anniversary of, what is uh, 1978 to 17. To, to 2017, how many years is that arithmetic? That's about mm -hmm. 77 to 2017 would be 78. 40. So it's 39. 39 years the MOVE members wow. have been incarcerated. They are really the MOVE 7, though we continue to refer to them as the MOVE 9, but they're the MOVE 7 because two of them had died in prison. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and the judge even said he didn't know who killed the officer who was assumed to have been killed in friendly fire because of the trajectory of the, of the bullet. Uh, it, it, it was, it's just obscene that they're in jail for a crime none of them committed. Exactly. So, uh, but they, they're definitely political prisoners. And then talking about MOVE as well, it's the bomb that was dropped on their... On the in 1985, while they were in prison, yeah. Exactly, right. and the way that it destroyed the neighborhood. And, and um, killed 11 people, including five children. Exactly, exactly. We've seen attacks like that in Haiti that have occurred uh, under, with the United Nations. Right. And actually the month of July, July 2005, was a major attack on the, on the community of Cité Soleil. And it was a murderous uh, attack on a sleeping community, and many people were killed. And there were helicopter gunships. That was one of several, one of about five or six of such attacks in the community. And many people were killed as well. Right. So it, it's as if these uh, fascist forces, and uh, calling themselves so security forces or police forces, you know, and they were, it was a UN operation along with the Haitian police. That, that committed those atrocities. And that went on in 2005, 2006, and 2007. And later on, other attacks have taken place as well and uh, against people in the community. So what we are seeing, and this was my entry to what's going on in Haiti, because uh, basically when we look at the situation in Haiti, it's very similar to what happens in other countries, in our own communities here, when you mention MOVE. And uh, right now, there is, an, uh, there is a movement, a big movement by the right-wing forces in Haiti, the government of Jovenel Moïse, illegally installed, installed. They are trying to bring back the Haitian military. And this is, and many people are saying, well, they, they are confusing purposely the Haitian military that led to Haiti being an independent nation in 1804 and you mentioned the Haitian Revolution. That was a people's army. Right. That was the people, the enslaved Africans, breaking their chains, mobilizing together to, for their defense, for their, to break the chains of slavery, for independence, and they organized themselves as a fighting unit to fight against the British, the French, and the Spanish, defeating them. Whereas the Haitian military that's being, that they are trying to reorganize, restore, was created by the U.S. occupation of Haiti from 1915 to 1934. The purpose wasn't to liberate. It wasn't liberation of the people. Of the course not. The purpose was subjugation. The purpose was repression, putting the people back in plantation. So that's what they are trying to restore today. <laughs> right. When I say they, I mean the United Nations occupation, the U.S., France, Canada, and others that, su that support exactly. their agenda. Exactly, and we have a clip that we can play in a minute. But before we go to the, about that occupation, but I, I, before we go to that, I thought that um, we might um, talk a little bit about, um, I lost my train of thought. Okay. Maybe we should yeah. just go to the clip. <laughs> Did well, you want to? Well, yeah, well, I, I, I would just say that for, the, for this government, for the Jovenel Moise government that just came to power through mm -hmm. a fraudulent election, for them to move forward with the military as one of their first major goals. And they right. said that within two years that they wanted the military back in Haiti. Right. Um, that that's a signal of a repressive government. Of course. I mean, the, the Haitian army, uh, when Aristide, by the time when Aristide came to power first in 1991, 
the Haitian army was taking up about 40% of the Haitian government's budget. And, you know, there were f fewer than like two doctors per 10,000 people in Haiti. Right. They were the they were the drain on any social improvement in Haiti at all. Right. And they were the force that would overthrow governments and repress the people. And so now, as the UN mission to Haiti, the occupation of Haiti, as those troops are, um, are lessening, there's going to be fewer of those troops there in Haiti, they will be replaced by the new Haitian army, which will be an army supported by the U.S., and it's already been, you know, been trained in Ecuador. The beginnings of that army have been trained in Ecuador. So we see it as a, a marking point about what this government is going to do in terms of repressing its own people and the fact that there's such a powerful popular movement that's arisen in Haiti. Right. The response is, oh, yeah. re, is going to be to reform the army. Exactly. Um, I remembered when it came back to me, I wanted to um, uh, re remind people of the, uh, although the Haitians kicked out the, the British, the French, uh, and the Spanish. And the Spanish, right, um, <laughs> uh, in, in, the, in the revolution of, right. of 1791, and that culminated in 1804. Actually, 1803, but it was celebrated in 1804, right? right. Yeah. So, um, but then they turned around and charged rep, um, reparations. France charged Haiti with reparations, and of course, Britain, France, and and Spain, they all ganged up on on Haiti economically and forced them to pay um, what uh, Aristide uh, uh, ascertained was equivalent to $21 billion mm -hmm. in reparations that uh, Haiti was stuck paying from 18-something to, uh, what, 1945 to the 1940s, yeah. to, yep. for something, that's correct. right? That's and correct. so that's how they impoverished Haiti and continued to call them the poorest you know, country in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, the, who impoverished them? That's right. But the lesson of that is it, it tells you um, that the lesson, they, there is no way they could, uh, they could have done it unless they had inside collaborators, which is what we are seeing today in Haiti. Oh, every and time. And the situation is with Jovenel Moïse, that's an inside collaborator who's undermining the nation of Haiti, his own country people, and same as Martelly had done and Preval had done. Okay, so, but Pierre, let me stop you right there. I don't want to get ahead of it, because sure. we need to let people know who those folks are. Yes. And, and <laughs> why don't we go to the clip, Anne? Yes, uh, okay. And, and uh, this is a clip that will talk about the uh, occupation from uh, um, 19, uh, 15, 15 to 1934. 34. There's not very much uh, resistance uh, in the U.S. to the occupation. In the 1920 election, the, the candidate Warren Harding uh, blamed the Wilson administration for having uh, murdered Haitians and, and committed various atrocities, rigged elections, and, and so forth. But uh, from that time onwards through most of the 1920s, Haiti is not much in the news in the United States. The one magazine, uh, The Nation, uh, uh, kept up a crusade uh, uh, against the occupation with various expose articles under Ernest Greening, subsequently a, a U.S. senator. Um, this uh, did not amount to very much. In 1922, there was a Senate investigation of the atrocities that the American troops had committed, uh, the American Marines had, had committed in Haiti, and this turned up various incriminating information and, and was successful in terms of dramatizing uh, the brutalization that had taken place in the earlier military phase. Nevertheless, uh, the U.S. government, the State Department, persisted in having a Marine Corps general in charge. From that point uh, until the late 1920s, one could say that the Marines sat on Haiti. <laughs> And, and insofar as there were reasonably good economic years, uh, most of the surplus uh, was, was bled off in various ways. And the main achievements were in basic infrastructure, such as, as uh, transport. By the late 1920s, um, 
if you look at, at the marine intelligence reports, I've gone through this sort of thing, it's very interesting. The, they tracked down and kept files on Haitians down to the small town level, village level, barbers, uh, minor officials, had personnel files who were, who, uh, which revealed their political attitude supposedly. And in all of this intelligence apparatus, which, which the Marines uh, kept up, uh, kept them busy, hmm, there was no indication of any trouble. <laughs> But then in 1929, the whole thing blew up. So uh, perhaps uh, this is maybe typical. Foreigners uh, getting the right signals, people giving them uh, a certain kind of information, selling information to them or whatever. In any case, the Marines didn't have a clue of the extent of uh, resistance, of, of hostility uh, amongst the Haitian uh, population in general, uh, amongst the elite and also amongst amongst the ordinary people too. So in 1929, uh, students uh, began uh, demonstrations and, and uh, this initially took place right in the heart of the American part of the education system. That is the Haitian uh, literate students, secondary school students who were studying agriculture. And the, this is what the Americans uh, directed the funds towards was a sort of practical education based upon um, uh, education for American blacks in the American South. Tuskegee Institute, for instance, sent a team down there to advise on the development of, of uh, agricultural technical education. Well, this, the Haitian students uh, were taking those courses, uh, but resented this. They were not allowed to take general university or, or secondary school courses, but had to instead study how to raise pigs and, and plow fields uh, and, and uh, agronomy and so on. And, and uh, they uh, resisted this. The start of the uprising was the students marching upon the director's house, the service technique, and throwing stones at it or something to that effect. And very quickly, uh, this uh, minor demonstration, a small number of students, spread to urban centers and even into the countryside. And the big cataclysm then was, was in the south of Haiti, the southern port of Ok, a bunch of peasants, hundreds uh, I don't know exactly how many, surrounded a small marine detachment. These were not gendarmerie, they were, they were actually uh, a marine unit. The peasants were very excited uh, because uh, in th there was unrest and the marines the previous day had sent airplanes over this town and dropped bombs in the harbor to try and intimidate the population. But apparently this had the reverse effect of terrifying people and so there was a chaotic situation. The Marines were surrounded by a, an angry mob with, with uh, sticks and shouting things and so forth. And the Marines opened fire. And, and 30, according to the American statistics, uh, 30 were killed. And this uh, was just uh, outrageous. And, and the, the occupation could not survive that. The, there was not... So uh, yeah, so, and you know, you know, it reminded me of Sharpeville. Yes, precisely. Sixty killed and, and in Sharpeville the, in South Africa. Yeah, and and the city talks about okay. That's a, that we pronounce it in in French and Creole as okay, and that's where I'm from. Oh. And and the the, the place is called Marchater. There was a statue erected in honor of the. Uh, after Baby Doc was overthrown by okay, the people. Back up here, we got to explain to our viewers who Baby Doc was. Yes, Baby. <laughs> we start sorry. with Papa Doc. Yeah, uh, the Duvalier family ruled Haiti. Uh, the father, he was a medical doctor, Doctor Francois Duvalier, and they, he was called Papa Doc, for short. And uh, he was a brutal dictator in 1957. And though they like to say he was elected by the people, he wasn't elected. He was installed. And exactly. uh, he was the favored candidate of the U.S. And with the Haitian army, they put him in power. And he inaugurated a ter terrible years of dictatorship. It was a reign of terror. Oh, reign of terror. Tonton Makout? The Tonton Makout were the death squads. Exactly. Were his death squads. The official name is Volunteer for National Security. But these guys were just... just um, I mean, the, the atrocities, the list of atrocities they committed is just mind-boggling. And uh, the son, uh, François Duvalier, Papa Doc, he died in 1971. And before his death, he, proclaimed, he handpicked his son, who was 19 years old, and made him dictator for life. Changed the constitution and said, this is the one I'm giving you. 
and there was a uh, reign of terror continued until 1986 when finally people in Haiti, the movement, came together and galvanized. It was galvanized throughout the nation, and they and Baby Doc had to flee the country. Oh, I remember that. So they that. called him Baby Doc. I remember they <laughs> ran him out of there, and the U.S. had to get get a plane to pick him up and get and and fly him to France. Exactly. <laughs> and then just to close on the Marche à Terre, uh, after he fled, there were many grassroots organizations that had participated in the overthrow of uh, the Duvalier dictatorship, father and son. And so they they were pres they were giving tribute to the many victims, right. including the victims of Marche à Terre, who the U.S. Marines who had supported Duvalier, even though the, the years were, but Duvalier was one of their, was one of their uh, people. Right. And so people went and erected a statue to honor the peasants. And would you know about two months later, two or three months after the statue was inaugurated, the statue was blown up right at the spot of that massacre. Somebody mm. blew up the statue. Oh. In other words, it's, they don't even want anything like that to be remembered for the people to pay tribute to their fallen. And, and it's a lot more than 30 work. Here. Well, yeah, I was going to say that. I was going to mm -hmm. say that in a couple of things about that clip, uh -huh. that I think that the story of the rebellion by, by peasants in Haiti by right. the, um, is, a, is a remarkable story of a massive rebellion that the U.S. military had to crush. And so it's just a little glimpse of some of the things that happened. But there were thousands of people right. who were killed by, exactly. by the Marine occupation. And there were tens of thousands of peasants who rose up against the occupation. The other thing is that there was resistance in the U.S., mainly from the black community. Oh, You know, Langston mm -hmm. Hughes, James Weldon Johnson wrote a whole book about against the occupation. All right. The same person who, you know, wrote the lyrics to lift every voice and sing. Mm. And, mm. you know, that should be our national anthem, I, I think. Of course. Rather than dropping bombs and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> but so there was a consciousness in the, you know, in the black population in the US about the importance of Haiti and about the fact that what the US was doing in Haiti was the same thing as what was happening to the black population in the U.S., right? right. This is the era of lynchings. This is the era oh, of, yeah. right. you know, the reign of terror that, of that was, you know, creating the great migration. And yeah. so there was solidarity that developed right. in, that, in that period. And it's important because there's that web of solidarity that exists between African Americans and Haitians, that goes very deep and long in, right. in the yeah. history. Well, you we know? sure need to revive it now, don't we? Yes. Oh, indeed. Big time. Yes. Indeed. Yeah, that's un it's unfortunate that uh, uh, the divisive forces have, some, have almost won uh, in terms of keeping us uh, from working together like we should. And also not, n not knowing the history. Exactly. Right, like to exactly. to unearth that history, and yes. you know, is is so important. Yes, it is know? because I mean, Haiti is seven hundred miles from Florida. For goodness' sakes, they're our neighbors. Yeah. You guys are neighbors. And among the people who uh, I don't want to start naming names because there are so many people like yourself, Kilo, and many others who've been in solidarity with the people of Haiti. But there is someone, Arthur Ashe, many people who, the great really? Arthur Ashe. The great oh, tennis Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh. He, he's now, he has passed away, but uh, Arthur Ashe was arrested in front of the White House. He chained himself to the White House. No mm -hmm. kidding. Wow, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Good yep. for him. Yeah, he was protesting the treatment, the mistreatment of the Haitians. Uh, right. the Haitian refugees and the support that the U.S. was giving, the, the way the, that the U.S. had organized the coup d'etat against, against President Aristide and the killings. So uh, many people don't know that. People like Randall Robinson, who almost died, and, and the great dancer, Catherine Dunham. And, and the, the, you know, of course, you have uh, um, the con Congresswoman Maxine Waters. So, so many people, I don't want to start naming names, because right, yeah. there are so many, and including, besides celebrities, but um, other people in the community.
right. you know? Yeah. You two are here, you know, and others, so many others. Um, so there is that solidarity that's very strong and deep. Yes. And um, let's fast forward a little bit to when the people drafted President Jean Bertrand Aristide, who was um, a priest at the time, Mm -hmm. uh, and who was just so loved by the people because he really served the people. Right. Talk about um, how the people drafted him to run for, for president, and it was almost like a last-minute thing. You want to take that one on, Robert? Yeah. Well, I think that um, this was in 1990, and one of the things that had happened in the period after Duvalier was a series of military-run governments that, you know, Haitians called Duvalier... From 86 to 90. Yeah, yeah. from 86 to 90, that, that um, Haitians called Duvalierism without Duvalier. Ah, yeah. You know, which is very important because Duvalierism without Duvalier exists today, today in Today, exactly, because exactly. exactly. they allow them exists to come today. back. These are, the, these are the same people with the same interests tied to the same elite yeah. with the same repressive exactly. mentality mm -hmm. and machinery Right. supported by the U.S. again, mm -hmm. you know, with just a new, slightly different face. But in that period, there were large-scale mass uprisings. The mass uprisings that had ousted Duvalier continued, and it's as a result of that movement that Aristide was drafted and eventually came into power, and that movement was called La Velas the flash flood of the people. Right. You know, yeah. like alone you were weak, together you mm -hmm. are, you know, la, la, together la. you <laughs> run, and, and when you're yeah. all together, you're the flood. Right. You know, and the you're the flood of the people. Flood. The cleansing flood, right? Right, to clean right. out there's, corruption. Of course, there's a lot of bad floods. Yeah. <laughs> but the cleansing flood that expresses the will of the people. Right. And so unlike many other struggles, this, this came straight from the people of Haiti. Right. And, you know. Who are amazing. You know, Just and, amazing. And, and put mm -hmm. Aristide in power in 1991. And on September 30th, 1991, there was the first coup against him, led. They, 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 he didn't last seven months, He right? lasted, no. that's right. And that's right. he was beginning to initiate his progressive, you know, social and economic program. And the elite would not have it. And the U.S. would not have it. In fact, this is a good time to play that clip for when he took office, and he actually tried to make overtures to the military at the time. Right. He thought by being he, appealing to their conscience. And I just have to inject that when I was reading Blood in My Eye, George Jackson said, you cannot appeal to these people. They don't have a conscience. Don't even think <laughs> about appealing to somebody's conscience. I'm paraphrasing. Right. Yep. Okay? But uh, by doing so, uh, we know what happened. Exactly. As a reward for providing security during the election, the president makes Sidras a general and appoints him chief of staff of the army. The armed forces have won a newfound respect from the population. President Aristide works to ensure their loyalty by granting pay raises, new uniforms, and better living quarters. Appealing to their conscience, he urges the military to participate in what he calls a marriage. that uh, Aristide, uh, because the army had cooperated during the election campaign, and because some of the people in charge of the army said at least that they were really uh, convinced that we needed a new army, a professional army, he probably felt that he could have confidence in the army.
Dans la mer, il y a deux couches. Ou même trois couches. Il y a des soldats en bas, qui majorité la mer, qui sont dans le peuple haïtien. Qui vivent dans la cité soleil, qui vivent dans la cité carton, qui vivent toutes les mauvaises conditions que le peuple vit. Frère ou pas de travail, madame ou pas de travail, ils ont de misère, papa ici. Et puis en haut, au grand couche officier, qui prend tout le corps de la mer pour y manger. La mer, les soldats vivent dans de mauvaises conditions. Mais pour être capable de continuer à servir les officiers, les officiers ont le droit de vendre la justice. Le arrêté moun, yo pren kob pou yo lage moun. Yo extorke population, yo pren kob nan men population. I was working with the prime minister and we received a lot of letters coming from poor people in the countryside. A lot of them were peasants. Some of them were saying very clearly, not only be careful, but they were telling us We have heard the president talk about a marriage uh, between civilian and the army people. But in our neighborhood or in our little village, we have the same army that we used to have. It is the same people who used to kill us and who are still there. Okay. Okay, so comments? Yes. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, that was, you know, this is very, very, you know, this clip, I'm very familiar with it. And at that time, that was something that there was hope. You know, nobody was fooled by it, but it was a necessary step to take because there had been some strong signals. Because prior to that, the year um, uh, 1988, there was a rebellion within the army where the, as they were called, sea soldiers, the little soldiers, the rank and file, had rebelled against their officers. And that was two weeks after the army, uh, the general, General Nanfi, had ordered the burning of the church, of Father Aristide's church. Two weeks later, there was an uprising among the rank and file soldiers, and where they were arresting their officers. So they were arresting them, stripping them of their ranks, and the soldiers had taken over the rank and file. So there was that movement at the grassroots level, which was uh, going through various institutions within Haiti. So there was this glimmer of hope that the Haitian family at the grassroots level was coming together through various sectors and various institutions. And so, but the power of the elite, the power of the US, because the Haitian army was, was after all created by the US, They were being paid um, by the U.S. A number of their officers were, were, were uh, reportedly with the CIA, under the payroll of the CIA, in CIA's payroll. So what happened was when President Aristide took office and started implementing the measures, that whole sector then really um, did the coup d'etat. And so but a number of soldiers actually were killed. There was an officer, Pierre Louis, who, was, who died, who was shot right there in the palace. And there, was a, there is a statue in his honor. So it was a step that had to be taken to appeal to the Haitian family. However, the forces of reaction are so deeply entrenched and so well supported that... Um, by the powerful elite. By the powerful elite and the U.S. Mm, and well, the I'm foreign elite. Them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. And so that's, that was the outcome. Now, when President Harrison came back, see, people were very clear. They said, we don't want this military anymore. And well, President Harrison took the step to disband them. We should let people know that, uh, uh, one, that they, they not only ousted uh, Aristide and, and, and exiled him, Fortunately, they didn't kill him, but uh, and of course you led the led the uh, the um, the movement to return him uh, to the presidency, and uh, it was ultimately successful three years later, and most of his term was already served, mm -hmm. and so he was uh, only able to serve out about a year of his term before he had to 
uh, retired and, 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 and wasn't able to run again until 2000, right? That's right. Right. So in the meantime, Preval, who was on the screen and just passed away. Right? That's right. Um, uh, um, was the president for a while. For, and um, then I wanted to um, kind I, of... I want to make one small oh, correction. Sure, go ahead. Uh, it was myself and millions of others in Haiti who led the movement. <laughs> for no, the I, oh, of I, I just meant right here in the Bay Area. <laughs> oh, well, that, it was myself and yeah. you, Robert, and so many others. <laughs> but, yeah, but are you spearheaded it. Don't be so modest. <laughs> well, the, but, like... When he, so when he came back in 94, and in that short time that he was able to be the president in that right. period, yeah. the fundamental thing he did was to dismantle the army. Right. That was that. And, and that was 1995, That right? was 1995. Yes. And, you know, the U.S. pushed for him not to complete the full, they, they said, we want you to count the years that you were in exile as part of your term. And, you know, the, and so the U.S. insisted on that because they have never been comfortable with Aristide. You know, well, of course even, when they, even when he came back with U.S. troops in 94, they were attempting to force him to abandon his social and economic program, and he refused to. And that set up the next stage, which was when he came back to power in 2000 with a sweeping mandate. You I know, know and, and, and people were complaining, well, he didn't even campaign. Well, he didn't need to campaign. <laughs> you know, he didn't even campaign. <laughs> the people, right. He had not, got 90% of the vote. I, right. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Right. And, in 2000. And, and also Lavalas had control of parliament. You know, right. And so this was a moment where, and, and local offices, mayors, and, you know, right. like the equivalent of city council. So this was a moment where the Lavalas program could have been enacted, you know, yeah. and from the moment that they came to power in that period, the U.S. put in its destabilization campaign. You know, just as you see in Venezuela oh, today, goodness, yes. or you saw in Honduras that led to the coup against yeah. the Honduras. It's amazing the propaganda that's coming over the mainstream about Venezuela. Well, oh, it's it was unbelievable. It was it was exactly that it, yeah. in Haiti. Oh, you, the you funding said. of a phony opposition. Yeah, you know the whole, the, the whole nine yards. You know any mm -hmm. any demonstration that happened against Aristide was elevated to, you know, thousands of people in the streets when there were hundreds. When oh, a they million tried to label him a drug dealer and all they kind labeled of... him a drug dealer, a psychopath. I mean, yeah. you know, there was a massive, massive CIA and you know AI, USAID campaign against him. And right. in spite of that, on in February of 2004, right before the coup, a million, over a million people demonstrated in Haiti, in Port-au-Prince, demanding that there be no coup like showing their support for Aristide, showing their support for Lavalas. It was massive. It wasn't even reported in the New York Times. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they, it they, wasn't they, even they, reported. And I mean, there well, were over a million people. Yeah. And one thing the U.S. does so well, they always claim that uh, they were the, the ones who brought Aristide back. But really, it was a United Nations mission, you see. It was a U.N. mission. And so the U.S. Um, uh, bogarded their way and, and imposed themselves as the, as the troops because they wanted to make sure. Basically, what they had in mind was to keep the situation similar to what had gone on in Chile, where they wanted General Sejuas, the guy who did the coup and murdered over 5,000 people in Haiti. They wanted him to be like the Pinochet of Haiti, uh -huh. you see? And so, but people wouldn't have it. So people mobilized against that, and and this led to the Haitian army being dismantled, being disbanded. By this time, people were very clear: this is not salvageable as an institution. And and let's talk just for a few minutes before we go to the 2004 bicentennial uh, and the coup. Um, of what uh, was accomplished uh, while Aristide was uh, president for that brief four years? 
Well, I understand more schools were three built. Three years. Three years. Three. I mean, more, more. schools were built under Lavalas administrations than in the, in had been the built whole, in the entire in history, history right, exactly. of Haiti. Yeah. There was um, large-scale spending on health. You know, the development of health clinics, mobile health clinics sent to rural areas. There were there was a raise in the minimum wage. There was a um, parks were built. Right. In lit parks. So so adults could learn to so read. So adults could just sit that. there in the poorest communities in Haiti. Um, there were. Don't you know, forget the the women's. Um, um, uh, the the military thing that was turned into a women's oh yes right that that's the headquarters of the Haitian military was decommissioned and turned into the Ministry for Women's Affairs there right. for the very first exactly. exactly. that one <laughs> exactly there were women there were cooperatives <laughs> all throughout the country run by women right agricultural cooperatives microcredit programs etc and it was literacy programs right. that raised the literacy rate in a way that Haiti had never experienced before. Right. And this was all in this very truncated period ended by the second coup against And, and that was so cold because the, the 2004 was bicentennial and, um, you know, heads of state from Africa and, and throughout the African diaspora uh, came to celebrate the bicentennial of the Haitian Revolution, which you know, as the first black republic of the the globe, the world, uh, it was a very exciting time, you know, for in, 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 a, in a very, very special event, you know, and, and uh, obviously the, uh, the white supremacists couldn't stand it, so. Yeah, one of the things that happened, and I was there, it, it, was, it was magic. I mean, it was magical. It was phenomenal. You were there, right? Yeah, oh, I was there. And I, and I, I tell there. you, it, it was something else. Were you there, Robert? I wasn't there for the bicentennial. Yeah. No. And so uh, what, what, what happened was there was a boycott organized by the U.S., the French, the Canadians, the European Union. And they put pressure, even though we had some Africans who came from the continent, and one of them was the king of the Alada nation. And he came because Toussaint Louverture is from the Alada nation. Yeah, and, and uh, the president of South Africa at the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mbeke. yes, President Mbeki Mbeke. was yeah. there. Was there. Just, it was this beautiful. But others who were supposed to come succumbed to the pressures of the French and, and, the, and the U.S. and didn't show up, oh. you see. And so uh, a number of the Caribbean leaders who should have been there and yeah, also African American, out, huh? yeah, chickened out. Many people from the U.S. who should have been there weren't there either. You oh see, so that's what I mean that there is this collaboration from within that needs oh, well, to be yeah, exposed. Yeah, yeah. Well, this see? is why and I keep so, saying to people we shouldn't uh, choose our comrades in, in, in arms and our, our freedom fighters uh, you know, based on skin color. Yes, that's right. But really? many, <laughs> many were there. Many were there who, and then the, the people of Haiti, it was, it was phenomenal. One of the things I wanted to mention also is that um, one uh, special attention during those years when President Arisid was in power was paid to children, education. So schools was, was subsidized as much as 70 percent, you see, For of the, the cost time. of tuition, books, all of that was subsidized. There was uh, some called Alpha Resto. Alpha is short for alphabetization, which means literacy. And Resto is a restaurant where you could get a low-cost meal, good meal, and then learn to read and write oh. in the same place. Mm -hmm. right. So you see, it was a country that He's was a being built. It's people's leader. It right. was something. And people's happened. movement. Yes. yes. And I, one thing I want to say as part of the collaboration that occurred, we saw President Preval here. But in Haiti, people see him as someone who has betrayed. The, the, even though, and what's so sad, listening to him, and that, that um, interview he gave to Kevin Pina, the filmmaker, Haiti Information Project, was right here in San Francisco when he described the military. It was at the hotel where he was staying. At that time, he was not the president. The government was in exile. And so one of the things, he betrayed the movement. You see, I know, he so knows sad. so much about the situation, but yet when he became president, he betrayed the people of Haiti and he sided with the ultra right wing elite. So even though they know the situation, they can speak good about it, 
But when it's time to act, they cave he wasn't in. there. Or they can be bought. Yeah. That's right. And I think it's you know, I think it's really important that you're asking all of these questions about the history, you know? Because and even though we whenever we come on the sh on, on your show, we always revisit the history. You right. Know? It's really important of because, course, because because you can't understand today and it's all it's this is recent history too. Yeah. Aristide. Aristide is back in Haiti. Right. The movement still exists. You know, when we went to Haiti um, for Aristide, when Aristide returned in 2011, you know, he was greeted by tens of thousands I of people. I know, I saw the film. <laughs> you know? Oh, Pierre, you, you're well, both so lucky to have been well, there. Well, you, you're right. <laughs> you're right. There's one of those times where you say, I am totally lucky. Really? To be on this planet at this moment oh, in this God, place. That was an amazing. <laughs> I know? mean, people walked for miles and miles oh, and miles. Yeah. It yes. was just a climb let, over the walls. I know. They were hanging up waves. in trees <laughs> on the roofs. <laughs> then, and when they left, not a, not a spot was uncleaned. They had cleaned everything. Yeah, because they, they went to his house. They went That's to right. his and house. And so they were so respectful. And the other thing, it took the, I remember it took them, what, 45 minutes to get out of the car? <laughs> oh, yes. At least. <laughs> At least. You know. So this is, it, this is alive in Haiti oh, today. Yes. I they, mean, they, this is alive in Haiti. Steve, you yeah. know? And then, you know, we were there during the campaign this last, you know, for this last election round mm -hmm. where Maurice Narcisse who is a medical doctor and a longtime Lavalas activist, was the Lavalas candidate. Right, for and president. we have a clip, so we should, okay. we should do yes. that real quick Good. while we still have a minute. Can we talk while this is on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I just, Pierre, we can kind of describe what's going on. You want to do that? Yes. I, um, this clip is actually when President Aristide was someone to, they, they like to say he was invited to come to court, but it was a, a trap, you see, because he was asked to come and testify in a case that he had nothing to do with. And many people sensed that he was going to be attacked, and they were saying, don't go. But they said, if you have to go, we'll all go with you. And so the whole population, that's what you are saying. They are oh company Oh, my God, I didn't realize that was what was going on. That's what was going on. Oh, my goodness. When and we say or organize people to go to court. Oh, right, right. That's what yeah, this was. Yeah, And, and it oh was their goodness. own initiative. It's self-organizing so, to go to court. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. So they took oh him to court. God. And probably because I've seen this clip. Um, oh, that is you, amazing. You'll see somewhere when he was going in, some of the young people were telling him, don't drink anything in there. Don't shake hands. <laughs> don't sit down, because they were afraid that somebody was going to poison him. And uh, just to fast Look at forward, that. that's just yeah, amazing. As he came out on his way home, uh, units of the police actually shot at the car. At, at the car. And right. the people had protected the car with their bodies, so many here, people were here, injured. Here comes um, so, Narcisse. Yes, doctor with Dr. Maris Narcisse, who's the Lavalas presidential candidate. So everybody was there from the, the grassroots, Dr. Narcisse. She didn't have to be there, but she was there in solidarity with President Aristide. There's Pierre. Yeah. So, I mean, um, there's uh, <laughs> Aristide. <laughs> there's Aristide. <laughs> yeah. So that's him going in right. the court. And, um, and, and she... Dr. Narcisse, who was here in the Bay Area, you can, you can cut it off. In April, she was here, and you met her. Yes, right. Yes, what a pleasure. Yeah, and you know, she was in all of these demonstrations. Like she was well, she's walking. She's a courageous she woman was too. Walking yeah. with the people. Oh and, yeah. You know, and these demonstrations were under attack. You know, they were you know f attacked with batons. Um, rubber bullets, at times live ammunition, uh, water hoses, water cannons, you name it. all of those things, skin irritants, you right. know, chemical, you know, these chemical irritants that, you know, just got on people and they couldn't get rid of. And she was there all throughout this campaign. Mm -hmm. And in that, when the election results came in, there were places 
where she had campaigned with thousands of people in the streets with her, where the, uh, the official results said she got three votes <laughs> or one vote, <laughs> you know? And it was I mean, farcical. Yeah. You it know, is, it's yeah. farcical, but supported by the U.S., supported by the U.N., of course, supported by the European Union, oh. you know, the OAS, and now enshrined as the so-called government of Haiti. And after years of struggle by people, now they have to continue under this new government that represents a continuation of the coup. That's what we always refer to, is that there's a process of these coup d'etats being consolidated in Haiti. It's and that's what this is. This is the consolidation of the coup d'etat. And, the re and they're trying to bring back the Tom Tom of coup. Exactly. Exactly. And it poses real challenges. Mm -hmm. We understand that from our own histories. And what, you well, know, they're turning the clock back as fast as they can here. I mean, now we're going to have affirmative action for white people. I mean, come right. on. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, getting just, ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, you know, they don't like being a minority, in quotes. That's true. Mm -hmm. right. So bottom line is uh, get used to it. Mm-hmm. But you could be a minority and still have your privilege. Well, I, I don't <laughs> like the word minority. <laughs> you know, I, I don't mean, even think we should use it because no, it means minor. Yeah, well, but I'm nobody's minor. Right, right. You know, no human yeah. being should be described as right. minor. We're all That's equal. Right. Right. And yeah. bottom line is, we need to come together and recognize that there's one human race, and then all there are different ethnicities, different nationalities, different religions, but there are not different races. Exactly. There's one human race. So this black-white race crap needs to go out the window and we need to stop it because um, the, the, a very small minority are white supremacists. I believe that. I don't, I don't believe that, that, that they're in the, they dominate. I just think that they're able to buy everybody else off and because and everybody wants to be white because they want to make a living. Okay? Mm -hmm. They want to survive. Right. They want to get a job. Okay? So, but if we could stop with the whiteness and get with the people humanity, people's humanity and understand that, that uh, unless we move to save this planet, even climate change is, climate change is not going to discriminate. <laughs> it's not going to select some white folks to, 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 uh, uh, and send them off to Mars. You know, uh, the, the bottom line is we're all impacted by what happens to this planet. And the majority, overwhelming majority of the people of this planet are poor. Mm -hmm. This, uh, the latest thing I found was, oh, did I, I we ran clean, clean over. Oh, I'm so sorry. We ran over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. Uh, and uh, Pierre Lamoussier and Robert Roth. Thank you very much. This and always thank happens. You for board hopping Ann Simmons. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to Freedom is a Constant Struggle. All right. We're out. <laughs>